Hi, my name is Peter Clark. I'm the leader of the Clark Lab. First, I want to say hello to you, Catherine, and thank you and congratulate you on the great fundraising that will enable our research project to move forward and enable us to do the research we want to do on net uh, in our lab. And I understand that you're, you're in the hospital right now, so please uh, know that all of us in the Clark Lab really have you in our thoughts and are wishing you a speedy and a fast recovery. Um, so I just wanted to introduce to you some of the science we're doing with the funding that you've been able to provide to us. Uh, I'll do that first, just here, and then uh, we'll cut to my graduate students who are hard at work in lab. They'll introduce themselves. They'll be the, they're the ones who are actually on the ground doing the work. And then at the very end, we have some videos um, showing some of the equipment we use and some of the, the experiments we're able to run with the funding and what that actually looks like on the ground. So uh, let me start by just telling you a little about the, about the science that we're really excited to do with the funding um, you've helped to, to provide. So for us, the fundamental thing that gets us interested about um, treating cancer, gets us interested about studying cancer, is this idea that cancer cells take up more sugar than really any other cell in your body. And we know this about human tissue and human cancers because it forms the basis of an imaging approach that's used to identify and diagnose cancer. So that imaging approach is called FDG PET, maybe something you've already experienced, but what happens is that um, physicians inject into a patient a labeled sugar molecule uh, with a label that gives off, off a signal that we can detect. And because cancer cells take up so much more sugar than the rest of the cells in the body, what happens is that those sugar molecules concentrate into that region. And they um, were able to detect that and hopefully localize where the cancer is in the patient. Um, that's all one good, it's good diagnostically, but what's also, you know, it's actually been known for a hundred years, but what's important to us in terms of a therapy point of view is that it's well known that cancers need this sugar to survive. Um, they can't grow without it, they can't divide without it, they can't move without it. So to us, the fundamental thing we're trying to get at is how do we block cancer? How do we stop cancer? from eating so much sugar. And on the one hand, that sounds like a very simple problem, but the uh, the challenge really is that not only do, does cancer need sugar, but so do the rest of the cells in your body. Um, the cells in your brain, the cells in your heart, the cells in your muscle also use the sugar. And so we can't just uniformly stop cells from taking up sugar, otherwise you'll do as much harm as you will do good. And so for us, the key is how do we selectively block the cancer cells, the net cancer cells in this case, from taking up the sugar, from consuming the sugar without touching the rest of the cells in the body. And, you know, there's lots of different ways of doing this and some ways um, work better than others. In our case, we're really interested in seeing how to do this quickly and on a large scale. And those are things that motivate us because we appreciate that cancer is something that, you know, is a big problem and needs to be fixed and treated quickly. It's not something that can take years and years to develop. And so what we've done and what we do in collaboration with a lot of really smart scientists at UCLA is that, you know, one can say that the, the standard way of approaching approaching developing a therapy is to do it kind of one at a time. You test something, you learn, you test a drug, you learn about that drug, you see, you know, what happens and you, you, you say it works or doesn't and then you move on to the next one. In our case, we've been able to automate the, uh, the experiments we're doing so that instead of testing one or two drugs at a time, we test hundreds and thousands of drugs, basically all at once. And so what that enables us to do really quickly is to, um, is to decide these drugs seem to work. So in our case, we're saying, does this drug block the cancer from taking up the net cancer, from taking up sugar? And uh, we're able to do that, is do that really quickly on a lot of drugs and find the ones that will work, or at least potentially work, and then Equally important is to figure out the ones that it will never work and to eliminate those and then move very quickly to studying the ones that do work in the net cancer um, as fast as possible and as, as efficiently as possible. And so then we can test those against normal cells, for example, and see if that blocks sugar in those cells as well. And so to do that, you can imagine that having one person try to test hundreds or thousands of, of cells by hand would be very difficult and be like, I don't know, trying to build 300 peanut butter jelly sandwiches or 3,000 peanut butter jelly sandwiches all at once. You get very exhausted very quickly. And so what we end up doing is we've automated this process. As we use robotics, we use advanced machinery to be able to uh, do this all automated. So our students, my students take the cells that we need, the net cells that we're really interested in, bring them up to, up to this facility and the robotics takes the, the drugs, puts them on the cells, 
it takes the cells and then it checks how much sugar have those cells taken up. And using those those um, analyses, we're actually able to identify different drugs that work. Um, and so some of the, actually some of the very later videos that you I think we'll have here show the, those robotics in action and show what that actually looks like um, in real time. And so, you know, without and without the funding that you've been able to provide to us, we would never be able to run these experiments. As a matter of fact, one of the things that often happens in academic science um, is that, not often spoken of, but is that in, in terms of these big funding agencies, the National Institute of Health, for example, scientists are only really able to get funding to do the work, do work on what they've already worked on. So if, you know, we previously worked on lung cancer, and so we're able to apply for funding for lung cancer and have a good chance of getting it. But um, if we were to apply to one of these big agencies for working, for example, NET and some type of neuroendocrine tumor, we'd be immediately rejected on the count that we've never actually worked in this field before. This is despite the fact that the thing that we, for example, study sugar consumption is pretty universal across cancer. So and the, the technique, the experiments we're able to do are also pretty much work independent, whether it's a breast cancer cell, a, a neuroendocrine tumor cell, a lung cancer cell. Um, and so we think there's a lot of value what we're able to do, but trying to approach this problem from, for example, one of these big cancer agencies just wouldn't work. And so we're very thankful for the funding because what the what the NetRF, the Neuroendocrine Tumor Research Foundation, has enabled us to do is to move from the area of lung cancer to look at net tumors and really apply our technique and our technology, which we think is fairly universal to this very important tumor type that we're very passionate and motivated to try to find some some new therapies for us. And so now we'll go to my, my students. And um, again, thank you. And we, we hope you recover quickly. Hi, Catherine. My name is Jess, and I'm one of the scientists working on finding therapeutic options for treating the pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. Now we want to show you around our lab space where we're currently growing the cells for the study. where we keep the cells that we are setting in the project. You kind of think of this incubator as a little house for all the tumor cells. And specifically, this clay right here has millions of cells that are pancreatic tumor cells uh, that are currently growing. And this one they specifically isolated from a 61-year-old patient in Japan. We heard that you're in the hospital and you weren't feeling so great. So we hope you have a speedy recovery and start to feel better really soon. Yeah, thank you again, Catherine, for making it possible for me and my team to be able to run these experiments. And we certainly look forward to being back in touch with you um, to provide some updates for our, for our lab. And again, we, we keep you in our thoughts and we certainly hope um, for a speedy recovery for you.